There is no denying the world is in crisis, full of financial uncertainty. Fear is the pervading sentiment across the globe. When it comes to money, people are naturally becoming more cautious and sticking with what they know. In this series, we work with everyday Australians who all have big financial decisions to make that will affect their family's future. With the help of behavioural science, our experts present them with new ways of thinking about their finances. I think for a very long time, Australia has been sold on the great Australian dream. And then that dream just kind of got bigger as we watched the wealthy and thought, wow, we can all have it all. And we've been out there chasing all of that ever since. In a world that is contending with a global pandemic and economic crisis, watch these Australians reveal their financial realities and how they've been impacted by COVID-19. Today, we meet Greg and Kate, who have a portfolio of direct Australian shares and own their own property. Their goal is to have a net worth of $5 million for their retirement. Greg and Kate admit that they only invest in what they know and could use some help stress testing their plan, particularly in light of the effects of COVID-19. Join us today as we explore ways to find returns in the new investor reality. I work at Tabcorp. I'm a product manager and I work in the gaming side. So. When you walk into a big club and see all those machines, I'm in the background. So I worked at the Family Court for 14 years um, in admin roles or executive assistant to the regional manager for Victoria and Tasmania. We have three children. Uh, Sarah is 11, Madeline is 10 and William's eight years old. So I finished work five years ago. Um, I'd, we'd had children. I took 12 months maternity leave each time for each child. And we decided that we would put the kids into daycare whilst they were young uh, and then um, I would have a period of time at home when they got to school. For me personally, leaving work was always, um, I think I always, I loved going to work and I loved the break from the kids. Um, so it was very hard to make that decision. We bought our first property in October 2004. We were uh, married. We've just been married. We got married in 2003. Kate saved our deposit. I didn't do it, Kate did. I just give the money to Kate. You didn't. She she would put it in the bank and then <laughs> she would skim the shopping money. No, 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 no. He didn't give me the money. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see the money, but I knew it was coming in somewhere. Yeah. And I knew I had to skim it. So if there was a utilities bill, I'd double it and tell him, oh, we spent a lot this month. <laughs> Sorry. And um, so if it was 100, I'd happily tell him it was 150 or two and he'd give me his portion or he'd pay for it and I'd siphon the rest. I'd, I'd push, I'd stash the rest and then after about six or ten months I felt a bit guilty because I had a nice stash. <laughs> um, and I thought I'd better tell him because it was in my name at that stage and we'd only been dating for about 18 months and living together for about 18 months. So that's when I gave him the, the details of the account and the password and I said if anything happens this money's yours as well. <laughs> At the moment, we're very focused on the share side because we've got the one large property and obviously we didn't have an awesome experience with having rental properties. We had tenants in our first house when we were in the second house. They broke the shower base, which destroyed all the floor because the water got through. So we had to go and fix all that. Shares, you buy them, you buy ones with decent dividends and then the money comes. You can do it. You then make the choice about the money. That's what I like about it. So we're long only, Australian equities is pretty much our, our strategy. Uh, the reason we go that way is we follow the sort of the Buffett model of buy what you know and buy the shares, buy shares in companies that you buy things in. I think also we want to diversify what we've got. So whilst we both, um, whilst we both have our own super, um, I think when I when I get back to work, we'll probably increase. We've been living off the one wage mm. um, and my dividends for um, a number of years now. So I think we'll continue to do that where possible. We definitely want to leave our children something. So at this point we have uh, a property, um, we have superannuation and we have a share portfolio. Um, we would like to leave them a nest egg. Um, not entirely sure what, how much that will be. At the moment, um, 
they're all going to private school during primary years um, and that's paid for through dividends from our shares um, mm -hmm. so that's been a nice arrangement for us um, going forward with Sarah going into secondary school next year um, that's going to be fine um, for the next few years uh, but there will be a double up of two years where yeah, we got... have three um, in private school so it's planning for that at this stage and our dividends won't cover for three kids in private schools in Melbourne so it will definitely no. be my income at that point. Yeah. So my non-core investments. I have art, I have whiskey, champagne, gold, yeah, banknotes, bank Olympic stuff. I'm all over the place. And why am I all over the place? Because I do slicing research. I find a little niche and I do heavy research on it. And then I look for the opportunity. I sometimes park that, come back to it later. But I'm, what I think I am actually pretty good at is spotting the trend. Our retirement target, target is, a, is 5 million, but it's actually, we look at it as 5 million of, this, of earnable money as like assets that generate income. Why do we think 5 million is the retirement number? Well, if you think about the current world of dividends, we can make 8%, but if you be conservative and think 5%, we've got 250K between us and with 250k we can run our house as we run it today and travel because obviously there's no kids around by then so we can use that money to go on the, all the trips we want to go on have the things we want and not be stressed out i also think it's an achievable number for us um and yeah. as greg said it gives us what we want are we on target i think if we look I at can't it, see us being on target at the moment unless we sell the property in a number no, of years. we're not on target at then, the moment. But if we look at our shares and super, we're about halfway. But that's okay, we'll get there. I find it overwhelming sometimes thinking about having enough for when we retire. Um, and it's easy just to forget about thinking about it. Um, and it's easy just to get caught up with day-to-day -day living and the expense with it. Uh, the fact that we're only halfway to our goal and I've only got 15 maximum left in the tank crosses my mind occasionally, but I, I do the numbers in, and I sit there and think, no, we can get there. We just have to push hard and manage the cash on the way. It's clear that Greg and Kate have created a comfortable income stream through their share investments and built their wealth through property. But is it enough for their retirement goals? Greg's already said they're only halfway and they've got 15 years of work life left. To help us understand why Kate and Greg have invested the way they have, our behavioural scientist explains their unconscious bias behind their selections. Kate and Greg have very different ways of actually handling money and very different approaches. Um, to me, Kate is very considered and appears to actually really know who she is, where she wants to be and how she wants to get there. And Greg's having a great time right now and loves to explore and do very, very different things and has gone from having all sorts of investments in really different ways. He enjoys being in the now and there's a very big uh, conflict between the two in terms of where and how they use it and you can almost see that in the way they actually speak and think about it. We don't have a financial advisor um, at this point. Um, we'd be open to having one. We, we think we know what we're doing. But we don't. <laughs> but, <laughs> we've got something sus, but I think, yeah. we, we, I think we could take from what we've got here, I think we could take it up to here as well. Look, there's the taxing, the tax advantage. We don't know any of that stuff. I'd certainly be open to having a chat to a financial advisor and to finding one that was ready to listen to what we have and where we want to go and seeing what they had to suggest for us. Money's a tricky situation because it becomes a very big thing in a marriage and clear conversations about where we want to be, but then monitoring it and managing for it to actually get there are very, very different things. You can't just have a dream, but then not have a clear plan of action that actually has the supporting structure around it. Um, you have to have the awareness, I don't know it all, I need to partner with an expert because that expert can actually help me be far more than I'm ever going to manage on my own. Want to let go of old thinking and find out the secrets to wealth reinvented? Download our ebook, A Guide to Finding Returns in the New Investor Reality.
Next time, our panel of experts discuss the investment strategies and approach that Greg and Kate need to consider to get to their goal of $5 million. If you're just investing in Australian shares, you're missing out on around 97% of opportunities that are available around the globe. While they seem to have the saving bit under control, they don't have any real visibility on their spending. Thank you.